Motion to reconvene. Yeah, motion to reconvene in open session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Do the order of business. No recommendations for change there? No recommendations. We're going to public appearances. Um, Pete Carnes. You look at this and then just pass it around. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm a member of the W Society. I want to create as many wins as possible. I want to provide for as many constituencies, to provide as many options as possible for the future. Um, I will take whatever small credit do me for using the football analogy, moving the pile on going from grass to artificial turf at the high school, and also for blasting the wall and adding to the lunchroom capacity at Glacial Drummond. Um, this diagram is what I discussed at the last meeting. I want options for the new 3-5 school that would not cost a lot of money on the $33 million budget, but would provide options for the future. Um, among the, the future usages at present unfunded but options would be a pool on one side of that hallway, of, that, of the um, 120 by 8 foot hallway. Um, and 125 feet would give you more than enough space for a 25 yard, the high school distance swimming pool um, and with pool decks on each side. It would also give you the option of, of having locker rooms on the other side of the hallway on the ground floor and also where you could add on the second floor for whatever future use uh, that is now um, unenvisioned. Um, I would also prefer a rebound wall on the outside of the gym like Winnipeg has and I would also prefer that a third gym be, be designed and or where you could build a third gym uh, for the future, a third gym say 60 feet by 100 feet so it would be, be more than enough for a, a 50 by 84 high school basketball court or a 30 by 60 volleyball court. I just want options for the future. And if, if you build that wall between, between I, I'm guessing it's the, um, the south wall of the, of the three-tiered uh, um, three um, um, academic wing and the basketball courts, um, you've, you've just you've, 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 uh, handcuffed yourself for life. And, you know, and that's what we did, uh, you know, a different board, a different superintendent <coughs> did at Glacial Drummond. That's what we did at the high school, that's what we did um, at uh, Taylor Prairie, where, where, you know, where, where the two gyms, uh, the first two places aren't uh, expandable, and Taylor Prairie and Glacial Drummond, apparently, you know, the, the buildings are largely um, um, on, uh, you know, to, to expand, you know, without major calamities and so forth. But I just want options for the future. You know, I don't live in Cottage Grove, but I'm willing to fund a, a hallway that's 120 feet by eight feet, I'm guessing that costs you know diddly on 33 million dollar budget, or was it 35 million? I forget what what the referendum was, um, and um, um, and the other cost is that you're just moving the uh, the the thing by say 120 feet. You know you're losing, but I, I didn't have a chance to to do the math. But I mean you have 55 acres uh, by I'm guessing ha or you know divide by half a mile. You've got all sorts of feet going you know north. And um, I just want uh, options for the future. Okay, thank you much. I move on to the consent agenda. Approval. I move approval of the consent agenda is presented. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Recognition. Okay. Uh, 2019 school year is off to a great start. Our teachers and staff are working on making all students feel welcome, building community, and maybe getting a few laughs. There are some links uh, on your uh, board docs to some of those uh, examples. Mrs. Link's sixth grade classroom, uh, homeroom, excuse me, brainstormed ways to be safe, responsible, respectful, and kind. They also talked about ways to have fun and work hard this year. So likewise, there's some additional 
links to uh, the activities from her room. Students have been learning and modeling PBIS, which we know is positive behavioral interventions and support. Students went all around the school learning skills in all areas of the school, including the cafeteria, playground, bus hallways, and more. And lastly, first graders in Ms. Jones' first grade class did the first of many STEM activities this week. Their first challenge was to stack cups on their own and then work as a team to build a tower. Success was had by all teams. So again, we're really excited to have our students and staff back in our schools and uh, some excellent examples of the uh, wonderful learning activities that we have existing in Minona Grove Schools. Uh, correspondence. Good enough. All right. We're moving on to the superintendent's report. Okay, just one item uh, to report on tonight. We'll have uh, some more detailed information coming in the near future, but I just wanted to let you know that we have been in discussions uh, with the ALMA advisory group uh, as a follow-up to the presentation uh, to the board this summer. And the first part that we're engaging with, of course, is the recruiting. And so uh, Nicole Thibodeau, our HR director, uh, is working directly with their staff, uh, looking at processes for the recruiting part of it. Uh, and, um, and we'll be reporting out here as we move along about what some of those strategies might be that we're gonna incorporate. Um, and then we'll have a much more detailed report in a very near future uh, about the overall process of the screening and so on, which is a real important piece um, uh, moving forward. So um, <coughs> I just wanted to let you know that we are engaged. I put a little, short little summary just added uh, this afternoon to um, uh, give you a little bit of an idea of some of the pieces that Nicole will be working with them on in the fall. Moving on to board reports, uh, policy committee reports. I think I can do that quickly. How pretty quick this really it's on the agenda today. We, the policy committee met on August 15th, 21st, and 26th, all on policy 0155 on committees, board committees. We initially took up review and discussion of this policy because of the creation of the Teaching, Learning, and Equity Committee as a standing committee. We needed to add it. Um, and as we reviewed the whole policy, we thought there were some areas that weren't very clear. We, so we looked back at our former policy, pre-NEOLA, looked at WSB background material, some of their samples, um, and had some consultation with Mike Jelka, our attorney, on some question, language issues. And that policy is on the agenda tonight for a first read, so I'll leave it at that. All right. Thank you, Susan. Moving to possible action items, we'll start with the policy revisions, the second reading. And I'll just remind uh, the reason that we have this group of policies, it was part of a NOLA update from last year where the board has already approved the majority of them. These were put on hold because they had been, um, there were some revisions to them just prior to, or so as we go through that cycle to get everything up and date online this group came through afterwards. So again, a number of these are essentially the same policy in different <coughs> sections of the policy manual, depending on which staff or employee group that they pertain to. Okay. And I have a motion to approve the policies 1130, 1422, 3122, 3139, 3230, 4122, 4230, and 6520 as presented. So moved. Okay, I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next is date, time, place for annual meeting and budget hearing for 2020. Okay, last night at the annual meeting, uh, the electors authorized this board to determine that uh, date, uh, time, and place. And so if you uh, choose to use a similar date as this year, Monday, September 14th uh, would be a possible date in which to hold the meeting. Um, recall that that was a change this year from several years previous where it had been in October. So it did include a <coughs> reminder from Board Docs about why it was moved up, that there really is no point in waiting an extra month. There's no new additional information new additional information um, regarding the budget that come through in September. So, uh, but it's entirely up to the board to choose a, a date. I just have one question. I noticed earlier, you know, back in like 
2007, 2008, we had it really late in October. And by then, we would have all the final information. And But was there some reason we stopped? We did that because we have to participate in cash flow, which is one of oh, okay. the okay. Um, I knew, I thought for us to have reason. our first cash flow payments before right. our payroll. And we run out of cash, just be, we can talk about okay. that's fine. Okay. No, that I knew. I thought there was a reason. I just couldn't remember what it was. So okay, I'm, I'm fine with this then. Um, I would. Um, no, I, I'll go ahead and make a motion. Um, I move that the 2020 annual meeting and budget hearing be held on um, September 14th of 2020 at the district office. I'll second. Okay. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> at 6 o'clock p.m. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any discussion on it? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next item, uh, revised 2019-2020 co-curricular and addictive schedule. Okay, the board had just recently uh, updated the schedule prior to the school year, but uh, we're adding one additional recommended position, and you'll see in the summary, uh, Science Club Advisor. We're thrilled that that's a new club that has existed the last couple of years on a volunteer basis at the high school, and now we've got uh, sufficient uh, sustained membership that we believe it should be a uh, paid position um, as an advisor, and you can see the rationale for the recommended dollar amount. And, uh, for approval tonight. I move approval of the revised 2019-2020 extracurricular and additive schedule as presented. Second. Okay. Discussion? I have a question. Sure. Can, Dan, can you, I know I asked this question before, what is the determination of the coming up with the percent of base salary, be like football, basketball? No. And hockey are higher than soccer, volleyball, yeah. track, swimming, and, and baseball. Is it a time constraint? Is it a money thing? What is the rationale that we do yeah. that? Yeah, so the major re uh, revision to this schedule was done about four or five years ago. And at that time, uh, it was based upon, first of all, what we had in place that was previously collectively bargained. Secondly, looking at comparable uh, pay schedules in Badger Conference. Uh, and then third, as you mentioned, uh, trying to look at the you know, time commitment as a piece. And uh, so those were the factors that were considered. Um, we've also add that we've talked about, okay, it's been four or five years now, at some point we really should look at a total evaluation of the entire schedule again, uh, not only for equity amongst positions, but as well as just the total you know, compensation. Um, for because I, it can't all be time, it can't be saying a, any, any one coach <coughs> puts in more time than other varsity coaches. Yeah. Because I, I know that the soccer season and the football season are very <coughs> similar time-wise. And uh, the basketball season, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of similarities here. But, I, I mean, I, and if it's been five years ago and <coughs> we haven't done a time study to see exactly what, it, so time is just a portion of that. Right. The main reason is because it just hasn't been changed or looked at, right? I think that's fair. So what, what what would be the process of taking a look at that and, and doing like an assessment to yep. to see if it's equitable with the other sports? Yep. Um, I think it'd be simply as much as through discussion. Say, you know, there's consensus <coughs> from the board. Please take a look at this, and and then one way would be administratively we could look at it. We could go through personnel committee. Um, either one of those. Um, last time we started with a. Um, it would start with a committee, um, and then ultimately a recommendation came to, I think we went through personnel committee, made some adjustments, and then, you know, to the board. But anyway, to, to start the process, I guess it just mean consensus from the board um, to look at it. Then we can figure out. Dan. Well, I, I think, uh, Dan, it, it doesn't get the same kind of review annually at the <coughs> schedules and other types of things and I think it's uh, 
but generally, I think I, I don't think we want to get into figuring out <laughs> the magic formulas in each one of those positions. Yeah. But uh, I, it seems to me that that uh, uh, there's a question of of whether football is different than volleyball and all that sort of thing. That uh, you might explain how that is, how that is worked out. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, the amount of percentage, uh, it's a basic percentage of their basic salary, is that correct? Yeah, it's an arbitrary number. So the base we use is not actually the base teaching salary any longer. Um, and, and that's a good point. One of the considerations in looking at overall salaries is it's a matter of, okay, do you put salaries into here versus into base you know, um, you know, contract salaries? Um, so I think that's a separate question than equity amongst the different positions. And, and so I, I think as we, we talk through here, my, my recommendation would be if, if, if you want to look at the equitable piece, uh, I think it would be a very easy thing to add for discussion at personnel committee. We could at least take a look at that and maybe look at comparables from other and, and at least have that discussion for looking at actually trying to increase as a larger discussion about total compensation. I think they're kind of two separate conversations. But I think the point that I, I would make is uh, having served on the personnel committee for a while, it's been, it's been uh, quite a while since this has gotten a, uh, a core review, so to, yeah. so to speak. I mean, I think we've added a position or, or done some touch up here and there, but uh, it might be something for next year's mm -hmm. thing. So, I so. mean, <coughs> well, I, I thought it was a staff committee mostly. I mean, it was, uh, I think, Jeff Schreiner and some of the coaches themselves. That's where it started. That's where it started because, and they had a whole formula that they used to come up with it. Mm -hmm. And we did redo it after, I mean, it was after Act 10 because it was after. Yeah. So it wasn't, it's was still <coughs> getting long ago, I guess. It's hard to believe. It. But um, so, yeah, I mean, I, if, if they feel like they, there's an interest in looking at it again, I think that'd be worthwhile. But they're the ones who, because there, there was a formula based on time, numbers of kids, numbers of events. They had this whole thing that they used to figure it out. And um, they had things, yeah, like, worth they had at that things again. like responsibilities that went beyond the actual right. coaching contact time and things like that. Yeah, well, like, which a lot of coaches have, so yeah. Right there. Uh, but for instance, volleyball is a women's sport not a men's sport. Football is a men's sport, not a women's sport. Right. And I see an equitable difference if we look at our head coach of volleyball, um, whether it's a man or a woman, it's a women's sport, mm -hmm. is getting 11% uh, of the base, whereas football it's 14% of the base. Mm -hmm. And I guess my goal isn't to take away from the football, it's to bring the other sports up into an even equitable percentage. So that's just, uh, so I would like to yeah. maybe, you know, get that to the personnel community yeah. to take a look at it if we yeah, can. Okay. I, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. So if it's okay, I'll make a note that we, the board would like to review the schedule uh, essentially with the, with the lens of equity amongst the positions and then I'll work with the recommendation about how to do that, whether it be through committee or right. and so on. I, I, I'm okay, I mean, I, I'm okay approving this if we do that, okay. as long as we do that. All right. Any further discussion? Right here and there. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Uh, uh, one, one other question. Eric, are you thinking that, that the committee ought to be looking at it before the next academic year or during the next academic year? Well, I think we should look at it when we can. I don't think we should put it, you know, put it off. I don't know time-wise what makes the most sense, but... I think we should look at it this year. You know, okay. whether that means it would be looking at next year making a change, then I think that's what right. we should do. Yeah. All right, moving on to resolution authorizing temporary borrowing and the, an amount not to exceed $6,200. Assurance. 6.2. Six point two. <laughs> Is that six? You missed some zeros. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my God. Wait, oh, because there's a dot there. Oh, that should be a comma. Jeez, where is comma on there? Come on. There is a I was going to prove that real quick. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's Okay, the well, that's different there. Okay, if you, if you open the resolution, it the says 6.2 million. The okay. resolution is yeah. correct. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just write it. <laughs> All right. For okay, it's not to exceed six six point two million assurance of tax and revenue anticipation promissory notes and participation in the PM. A levy and aid anticipation notes program. So what this is is this is our cash flow borrowing. We do it on an annual basis. <clears throat> the purpose of doing that is based on the schedule that we receive funds from the states and um, property taxes. So we will not receive any funds for property taxes until a uh, small portion comes in in January and then we start seeing them in April and July, which is on the later half of it. And then our equalization aid payments are spread up throughout the year, um, but only at 25%. We will not start seeing those until uh, November and December. Um, so you can see we have, uh, we have payroll that's happening right now, school coming back. We do have a number of expenditures that we do need to meet. So the $6.2 million is our cash flow. Last year we borrowed 5.9. We do usually increase it with inflation I shouldn't say inflation, increase it based on working with PMA and looking at when we anticipate our expenditures based off previous years and when we find that we will uh, have our deficit so we can continue to meet the, our payroll obligations. We will not know the interest rates or anything like that until uh, PMA goes out, um, but this is a group that we go out with. It's not just individually with um, Monona Grove, so PMA has two groups um, and this year with, with us moving up our annual meeting we're able to move that up actually a month earlier so it does leave a little bit of pressure for myself of making sure like do we transfer money from this bank account to this bank account um, but we will be with <clears throat> a number of other districts um, going out to bid I move approval of a resolution authorizing temporary borrowing in an amount not to exceed $6.2 million, issuance of tax and revenue anticipation promissory notes, and participation in the PMA levy and aid anticipation notes program, as presented. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I'm sorry, this has to be a roll call. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Come on, man. All right. <laughs> Roll call start with Dean. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Motion carries. Next is the McKinney Street Commissioning Management Services. I'll take it, Jeff. Sure. Um, so if you recall, uh, we did approve a contract with uh, McKinney Street to do our commissioning of our new building. Um, and in analyzing the, uh, uh, the amount of work that's going to be done at Winnequa, part of our capital maintenance and the referendum, it is a complete overhaul of the HVA system and we do be believe that bringing McKinstry on to also assist us with that to ensure that commissioning is happening, that the, the product that we're putting in there is, um, meets the needs that the district has, is um, standardized throughout the district. So, this is what the contract is. We did not lump it together with the new elementary. We felt it was important that we kept them separate. Uh, this would be part of um, some of the referendum funds that we would utilize. Do I have a motion <coughs> for approval of the McKinstry Commission and Management Services proposal as presented? That's so moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? I, I have one question. Jerry? Uh, does this does this include uh, uh, some occasional or part-time assistance in in kind of quote end quote the owner management the owner so they assist this in the function to assist you in in, uh, in the building uh, building construction process so yes for the renovation side of it for Winnipeg yes okay so there's in your judgment there's adequate time in there for that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving to discussion items, uh, policy revisions, first reading. All right. So this is the, the policy on committees. And 
Our former policy had a separate policy for ad hoc committees, and when we redid it with Neola, we took that out and we just set a couple yeah. sentences in. And then we felt like some of the guidance that was provided in our old policy would be helpful again, so we divided the committee policy into, you'll see headings here, standing committees are dealt with first, and then um, ad hoc committees, and then some things that, that apply to all committees. And again, we some of this was in our former policy and some we pulled from WSB sources. Um, if you're looking at the, you have here a revised sort of clean copy and then the, if you click on the main committee, it, it shows all the, the changes, so the new language. Um, we, like, we decided we'd like that, those couple sentences from our old policy to sort of introduce why you have committees. And then the whole part about complying with the open media law, that's pretty much unchanged. Um, we are currently out of compliance with policy since we li had listed community engagement, communications, government relations as a committee, but there was, we felt a, s a sense on the board that we weren't going to have that committee, so we are proposing to delete it, um, knowing that if in the future there's ever a reason to get it, none of these, none of these policies ever disappear, <laughs> because if you go on Google and Google them, all the old ones come up too, so, and do, plus Joyce archives all that stuff, so we could get the description again. Um, so that's the main change there. And then we, uh, and then the language about appointing the committee, we decided to make it clear that it should be within 30 days of the annual election of board officers um, and that the board president will appoint each standing committee chair and then also members of the committees. Um, and, that that, and then sp spelling out that those appointments stand for a year if no vacancies occur. Um, and the board member president may remove and appoint, reappoint committee members as appropriate, meaning if something like there are time conf conflicts that come up or something like that where people can't attend <coughs> these meetings. Um, and we, oh, under employee relations, I guess for the reason, for purpose of consistency, we couldn't remember why we said two board members on that, and truly the, that committee didn't meet all next year. It, you know, it's a committee that met, meets as needed. But we, changed, we decided to change it to up to three, which would mean we'd have to appoint another person for this, because we thought it made more sense. Um, I personally like having three, com three board members on committees, just because at least you have a majority if there's some disagreement. And so we, we decided for consistency, since all the other committees say that, we would change that to that. And then there's the Teaching, Learning, and Equity Committee, um, as it was approved at the last board meeting. The language on ad hoc committees spells out that they generally, they are, they are, the purpose of them is a specific function, um, like the sustainability committee, there's a specific charge. And there should really be, we did the, that uh, the same way after three members, and they include members who are not members of, individuals who are not members of the board. And the appointment here, we felt the board, um, that the committee, the board members on the committee should play a role in selecting the members simply because when community members apply, um, they may know some people and may not, there may be, you know, there may be more insight into that than just the board president doing it. Um, and we felt also when a, when a ad hoc committee is created, there should be an end date. And with, I think with yours, we had language in there about a final report, and I'm not sure we even did that with sustainability. It wasn't real clear. Uh, but anyway, we felt that there should be and that's, again, based on our former language, too, that uh, delivery of the report to the board upon reaching a dissolution date established by the board in its charge or upon decision of the board. Um, there kind of were some dates in the sustainability committee to the aim for. And then all committees, the superintendent and board president shall serve as ex officio members. That's the current practice of standing and ad hoc committees. We just decided to clarify that unless otherwise determined. Um, for example, on the Teaching, Learning, and Equity Committee, those staff members served as full members, but that was a very different type of, the staff advisors on there, Dan, and when we would have Lisa come in or you know, other people come in, they were advisory, and, um, and then Dan and Dan were both ex officio. Um, and Appointment of the district of district staff to advise or serve on the committee mem on a committee will be by the superintendent. All district staff members serve in ex officio capacity unless otherwise specified in the charge. 
Then we also liked this language at the end about um, spelling out that when committee, <coughs> the community members <coughs> join committees, whether it's the standing committee, the TLA committee, or an ad hoc committee, it's very important that they understand all the open meeting laws, that they can no longer email among each other about their committee views and all that kind of thing. And uh, the WSB recommended just handing out a sheet of written guidelines about open meetings laws and what constitutes a meeting that you can't be uh, even talking about. You know, you, you can't get a quorum of committee members outside of a meeting, all of that that's new to people who aren't on the board. Um, so spelling the, all that out for them and the, and the care with the use of email. So we added all that. And, and you know, typically, like with Eric's committee, I remember we talked about that the first night. We didn't have a written thing. But we thought, no, it'd be nice to have a, something that we could just hand out. So, Peter? Uh, my only concern is under the ad hoc committee, where it says appoint non-board members in consultation with the chair and board committee members. The only way for such cons consultation to take place in in the presence of the open meetings law is in an open notice public meeting. Right. The board chair and the committee and the uh, you know you can't consult the members of committee any other way. Right, really. and that's how that's how we did it with the TLA committee, yeah. and that's how we did it with community engagement. It was, it, was it a notice public meeting? Yes, it was. It was, it was a notice okay. public meeting. And my concern about that is that sometimes when you're talking about um, uh, selecting members for a committee, sometimes you're talking about the way personalities work together, and I'm not sure that we always want to have that, that discussion um, in, uh, in uh, public. Um, if we want to go that way, we can go that way, but I don't, I don't, uh, I, I disagree with that, and I think that we, that should be open, that, that discussion should be open to the chair and board member, and the, and the board chair and the board president, if they want to have a, uh, open public meeting, they can do so. I think that should be allowed, but I don't think it should be required, um, uh, is my thought. And if we are going to put this language in here in consultation, it should specify that they have to have a meeting. It has to be a public meeting. Well, I don't think you have to because that's law. You can't meet without no, having No, I know, a but I just... Uh, and you can't consult among each other without having a posted meeting, so... No, I know. I understand. So I don't think there's a reason to put that in there. No. I mean, that's part, of, that's part of what we should know as board members, that we can't do I know, that. but yeah. if you want to do that, I think you should still say they should have it at a public meeting. I think just, just to make it clear that we're not going to be... Consult because if, you, if a, a lay person reading this would say, oh, they're doing consultation, it, does, it doesn't say it has to be public. It doesn't say it has to be so public. You could just, and you could the add members of the public might be concerned that that looks like a violation of the open You could certainly add in a public meeting at the end of that sentence. And I would rather just say, I, I would just rather have it, I would rather the, the committee take this back and look at that language and either, and put in that, but I think that um, they should just make it optional for the chair and the, um, and the president to discuss, decide whether or not they want to have an open meeting or not. That's all. I guess I would suggest um, that if that's an amendment you want to make, that you bring it to the next. Because this is just for discussion tonight. Yeah, I know. And, and that's if people why are supportive of it, then you could bring it to the next board meeting when we vote. And then. Um, sure. I would support that as an option. You know, as long as. Because if we say that, does that mean it has to be a public meeting or could it be. Oh, no. Well, he, what Peter's saying would be an option is that you wouldn't necessarily consult the other committee members, that the decision could simply be made by the board president and, and the, board, the chair. And, in consultation, which is what we, the language we use for other time, other committees, the standing committees. Right. Um, and I'm just, I'm just concerned about the appearance of, oh, not violating other meetings and the appearance of, the, of it. And furthermore, I don't think that it's always appropriate to do that selecting of people in a public meeting. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that's something that's we could think about, and so. And I would just like. I would just. I mean, if you if the committee could just propose some language, some alternative language there, and they could bring it to us as an alternative, of how to make that optional. Um, I'm trying to see where we have. Uh, what our next meeting? If our next meeting is before the. We don't we, have. We a don't have a policy schedule. meeting. Oh, that's right. We don't have a committee meeting. So I think a better way to do it would be simply. To, I mean, I'd be willing to write up an amendment language or somebody. I mean, I can do that too. Just bring it to the next meeting. Say, go to the policy but meeting. we don't have a policy meeting scheduled because uh, Dan has to meet with the other guys. I'll write language and yeah. bring it back next time. So yeah, and so we can think about, it, and then everybody else kind of think about whether that's how you want it. I mean, it would just we've worded as. Um, well, I guess I'll you wouldn't say anything. You would. You could actually, what you would do then, I think, is simply. Um, May it would be, it may well appoint the chair and, and appoint board committee members. Yeah, 
and well, if well, you want to put down maybe, yeah, a sentence, and then the, the chair and, and may, may the choose to have a public meeting to, to do the selection through consultation at a public yeah, meeting. Yeah, you could have a separate sentence. Yeah. yeah. May choose. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll just add if, if you know after tonight, um, I mean, you know, proposal the amendment there. If you have any proposed amendments, if, if you have an opportunity to get them, myself or Joyce will post them on board docs in advance. Right. Sounds good. All right. Let's move on to the process for filling school board vacancy. So we have the date set for the interviews, the 16th and the 17th, starting at 6. <coughs> All candidates will have at least 15 minutes to interview. And we have proposed questions, and we wanted to choose one out of the three that we have here. We won't read them out. But we can't call out the number who wants which one of the questions is important to you, and you can call that number out. And then we can. How many questions do you have? It's three of them. That's not enough to go around. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I thought. Well, I don't. I think. I, I don't. I think with this many people and short times, I don't think we need to have eight, seven, you know, six questions. I mean, I, I think. This to me is, I mean, I, I like this when I saw it. I thought three is good. You could ask them all. I, I always think it's artificial when you have everybody go around. Six? Anyway, we could so. just pick one, right? Right. I'm, I'm thinking we're only going to be picking one. Oh, one of these three? Yeah, one out of these <laughs> Oh, three. I got you. Okay. Oh, okay. We don't need to They've already answered two, which was right. in depth, in, in depth okay. and we, we can, can read that. all that. Yeah. yeah. But one question from these three, which one is the so what I'm looking for is, which one is the best question? In in your opinion, which one is the best question? Number one, number two, and number three. Oh, I see. Okay. And we can vote on which one we want to um, ask at the interview. I will not read out the question because I don't want anyone <laughs> who's going for the seat to have a jump on but they anyone can, else. But I'm watching you. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. I like, I like number two, personally. Okay. Because it gives us an <laughs> insight into a person's um, motivations. Okay, I hear number two. I would like to comment on the process in general, which is I think we've, because of the 16 candidates, we're going to be stretched for time. And um, and I agree we should have, you know, have obviously have short I, I initial interviews. I think what we should do is then um, uh, have a second meeting where we invite people back for a little longer interview and discussion um, the following week um, because we are going to only have 15 minutes with each people and I think what we should do is, is uh, have a second round of interviews. The last time we did this we had three interviewees and we got a we little chance. An hour. What's that? We gave we each an hour. No, we did. We no, did no, we did the whole meeting in a little over an hour. Joyce yeah. looked at the minutes, and so we didn't have more than fifteen minutes yeah. there. I don't we have all their paper applications. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't mind having an option for that, but I, we might not need to do that mm -hmm. because after we interview the sixteen candidates, we, there might be one candidate that stands out where we all mm -hmm. come to agreement, and we might not need to to do something. Sure. We also might have a couple candidates where we might want to bring back. You know the top three candidates and and interview. So I, I I like having that option, but I don't want to make I don't want to say that we're going to definitely do that. But we should have the option of doing that if we choose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the intention would be for that after that Tuesday or during the Tuesday meeting after the interviews are complete to have the meeting noticed that we give the board the ability to choose a candidate that night. Mm -hmm. And if you are not able to do so, I think at that point you could determine as a board if you. Okay. Just wanted to schedule another day. Yeah. That's, that's that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So we'll make sure we notice it properly so you have that option. Okay. okay. That's good. And I, yeah. I'm indifferent about the questions. I mean, I, I lean towards two, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Were you holding up three? Right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do it. Was he holding up two or three? He was oh, doing two. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see it. Um, so, so this is a good question. I, well, I, I kind of like three, actually. I like three, too. No, but, I mean, I guess <laughs> I If we have to pick two. one, I don't care. They're all, they're all of this yeah. is something. So. Two and three would have been, it was in my yeah. top two, and I'd probably go more with two as well. I think if we ask number three, we'll find out what they don't know about being a mortar. <laughs> I think <laughs> two, defi two definitely will bring out more personality of the person that we're interviewing and how they might we might envision they would work with us. Yeah, yeah, that's two. Yeah, that's the most broad. Yeah, that's probably a good one. Yeah. Let's go with two. All right, <laughs> it's the most open. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Can I mention this one consideration? That, uh, so, given that. These are open <coughs> meetings during over two nights, and yeah. you know the concern about the candidates maybe knowing the question in advance. Um, if someone chooses to come the first night and they're interviewed the second night, you know yeah. they know the question. Would you if want you to mentioned. consider giving the question to all candidates in advance and yeah. give an opportunity to would. reflect? I think that would be good. I think, that's I, I think that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Because that way everybody has it and they have time and there's no like yeah. a disadvantage for the people who come yeah. first and second. So right. well, there kind of is because they can, if they choose to sit in, which they yeah. they can list other people. Yeah, yeah. But something but you can do about that. I mean, last time I don't. Didn't. Did I don't think if we're asking one question like yeah. this that it's, it's not going to be so related yeah. to their, you know, it, it, I don't think that there's going to be too much of it. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Either. Okay. So I want to, and we can't do these in closed session. No. Right. So, yeah, all so, so all the interviews will be in open session, meaning that anybody who wants to come in and sit in on those interviews can sit in. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's not have no tailgate outside either. <laughs> so I want to be clear because we will send, um, you know, an email to all the candidates mm -hmm. informing them of, you know, first of all, confirm their time and then of this process. And so what we have proposed is. They could make an introductory statement to introduce themselves, whatever they'd like to share. Five minutes. Okay. And then this question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then last time you gave an opportunity for a closing statement. I don't know. That seems kind of redundant to me. That seems very redundant when you have, yeah, it's not like it's in a forum or something where they're I asking. Think, I think you should also say that they may be at, asked to come back. Or You're going to give them the question in advance. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that they also have enough to reflect. They can kind of roll in whatever they yeah. want to yeah. say with that question. So, do we have the option of um, following up with? Is this going to be a standardized interview, or is it more informal? Can we can we ask other questions? If if something comes up, or do we yeah. have to be formal with no. uh, so everybody? The, um, you're not hiring someone, so the laws that apply to be non-discriminatory and so on. Do you have you know? Basically, we, we could ask whatever. You could ask a follow-up, clarifying question. Gotcha. Actually, yeah, and that's I think what yeah. we should do. We should have an opening statement, and answer to this question, and, and then a, a time for a follow-up. Right. Yeah, that, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Next up, facilities planning update. Okay, um, so what's on your uh, board docs is just, you know, typical what we've been doing, just some of the prior issues that we're working on right now. Um, and then you'll see, I'll jump right to in the future meeting dates, we have tentatively scheduled another workshop for September 30th. Um, at that point, what we'd like to do again is to bring in our, our partners from EUA and Findorf and really look at um, you know, that those final plans and, and, uh, um, and everything about the exact process, the bidding process, what's going to happen in the next couple of months and so on, and an opportunity, you know, for board, um, not only information, but feedback, you know, before everything gets totally finalized. So, um, what we've been doing really these last couple of weeks is going through the details. So, for example, last week with all the building renovations, um, have the large, you know, pages and pages of, of you know, drawings and um, and with not only the building, the room layouts with the renovations, where the electrical outlets, the drops, and you know, all those sorts of things. And so that each principal had an opportunity to come in as well to review to make sure that this is really what we were planning on, on doing. There'll still be one more final review of that to make sure it is right before it goes out to bid. But uh, 
Um, so it, it's exciting. We're getting very close to the, that final you know, project, but uh, I said we'd like to bring the whole team in to share with the board um, you know, that piece. And then the other piece, uh, separate from that, would be the stadium project. We want to update the board on that as well. Um, and uh, we're in the process of trying to coordinate that fundraising effort. Uh, we have what we believe is the final scope that we'd like to propose, and, and so uh, by that time we'll have the in, in, in a position to be able to share uh, some renderings of the project and uh, the proposed uh, fundraising activities. Any questions? Uh, how close are we to <coughs> getting some final design on the construction projects? The school um, and that sort of thing? It's the design is essentially done. It's just the finalizing all of the specific, you know, the mechanical things, electrical, you know, plumbing, that sort of thing. But as far as the actual building design, it's, it's complete. It's, it, it has been since, you know, the last time you had the workshop. Right. But I just want to comment on the, the lighting at, at the new MG21 part is so much improved over traditional school lighting. I would hope we can do a lot of that in the renovated areas yeah. as well. I mean, it's just, I mean, there, there have been, there are studies that show that there are some kids who fluorescent light makes the words move yeah. on the page. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, lighting is important, and it's, it's a noticeable difference when you walk yeah. into MG21. It's and that great. was one of the things really specifically, nice. and I think we talked about this at the last workshop with Winnequa, because yeah. we're doing so much work in the ceiling because of the eight fact that we did decide while we're up there, let's replace all the lights as well. So it all the instructional areas. And, and then part of the discussion we had you know, this week was, well, once you're up there, and to take ceiling tile down and put it back, it's just as cheap to put in new, um, which is interesting. So those are the kind of final pieces that are going to be discussed right now. Fluorescent lights are on the way out. They won't be installed. There's no one will install the fluorescent lights. No. That's good. Good thing we spent all that money in 2010 installing. Upgrading. <laughs> <laughs> yep, really. All right, moving on to future meeting dates. Okay, so for, we've got the uh, two special meeting dates next week for the board um, mm. interviews. And as I mentioned, the 30th, and, and there were very few dates that the whole team was, so hopefully that will work for the board because. Um, um, but it was hard to find another date that was going to work for everyone. Do I have the 16th, the 17th at 6 p.m. and yep. 9.30 is the workshop one? Are those the 3? 30th. 9.30? Uh, the workshop? Yes. Oh. Yep. Also at 6 o'clock. Okay. I've been listening. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and then, right. of course, Reminder tomorrow night. Okay, we're back yep. here as well. Yeah, it's Bay County. What right. time is that? Uh, dinner begins at 5 30. So, yeah, and I don't know if we shared this or not. Because of the uh, unbelievable turnout, we're up around 100 now. Oh, wow. We don't have room. We're in the third floor, so we're going to use the Nichols Gym. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, that's nice. You can check out the new ceiling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that great. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Uh, can I have a motion for a child? Move we adjourn. Second. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried.